this is objective five. We are going to identify properties. I have a picture of an addition sign and a multiplication sign. Why addition and why multiplication? Why not subtraction or division? What's Lindsay think? Commutative? Okay, I agree. Tell me um, what properties are. What's Caitlin think? There are no properties for subtraction and division, and I agree. But my question is, is why not? What do properties do? Properties are shortcuts. How many like shortcuts? Let's make math easier, right? Because normally, how do we normally work a problem? What's the long way? Like all the way out using what? PEMDAS, right? Does that make sense? You gotta follow your rules, okay? But here are some shortcuts if your problem looks like a certain way, you can take the shortcut. And you don't have to do it the long way. And why would we want to take a shortcut? To make it easier and to make it shorter, faster, right? Okay, so these are shortcuts. So what's going to happen is, is these properties are going to have us... Um, like rearranging things and moving things around. Well, you can do that with when you're adding. When you take numbers and you rearrange them, like 3 plus 4 is the same thing as 4 plus 3. 3 plus 4 is? And 4 plus 3 is? 7. So would it matter which way you add them? No, it doesn't matter. So when you start to take things and move them around, <coughs> it doesn't matter if you're adding them. Same thing with multiplication. If you take numbers, 4 times 3 is? 12, if you rearrange them, 3 times 4 is, it's not going to matter if you're multiplying. But here's the thing. You can't move and finagle and rearrange things if you're subtracting or you're dividing. For example, 4 minus 3 is positive 1, but if you rearranged it, it wouldn't work. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. They're not the same thing. They don't work. So you can't... What these properties allow you to do is take numbers and kind of move them around and rearrange them and do things with them. You can't do that and it equal the same thing if you are subtracting or dividing. Okay, you can only do this when it's all multiplication or when it's all addition. Okay, so I've made a little wordle and it's got our properties that we're going to be talking about today. You don't have to copy this wordle down by any means. Um, so, what properties will we be discussing? All them. Like, what do you see? Tell me one. Commutative. Associative. Identity. Distributive. Inverse. Symmetric. Austin. Associative, addition, okay, properties of addition, properties of multiplication. Some new ones we might see are transitive, symmetric, reflexive. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Just remember, how many of us have heard of symmetric and transitive and reflexive? You've heard of some of them? Some of us remember, coming from different teachers, some of us learn things that others didn't. How many had never heard of them? Okay, so I've got a bunch that did. First block, it was about half and half. Half had heard and half hadn't. Just realize, if you've heard of it, sit tight while we're learning it, while everybody else catches on. Okay? Um, and if you don't remember what they are, I'm going to refresh your memory. Today, we're going to stick with properties of real numbers. Okay? Which means things you can do when you're adding and multiplying real numbers. Okay, what can you do with them? Tomorrow, we're going to add in the new ones, the transitive, the symmetric, the reflexive. Those are properties of equality. Shortcuts you can take when you're working with equations. Does that make sense? So today, properties of real numbers are things that you can do when you're adding and multiplying. You with me? Tomorrow, we're going to talk about shortcuts that you can do when you set up equations. Okay? So...
Today will be just a review of probably what you've already known. All right, so here's commutative. What's my shortcut word for commutative? Commute. Um, some people look at M and M and think move, move, like you take them and you just move them. I like the word switch. They just take and they switch spots. So the definition it says a plus b is equal to b plus a. And again, this is your addition one, so it goes in the first box. And then the multiplication one, which would go in the second box, is going to go a times b is the same thing as b times a, which we've already talked about. This is the definition. The green is the definition. When it gets to the examples, I'll tell you example one, example two, and so forth. Okay, these are the definitions. Okay, any questions about switching spots? That is commutative. So let's look at example one and example two. And if I asked you to put your pencil down, would you do that for me for a second? Just put your pencils down. Okay, you can write more in a minute. I'm not going anywhere quickly. What if I said mentally add example one? Austin took a shortcut. How many stop? How many added 25 and 48 first? Be honest. One, two. Anybody else added? You added the first two together first? I got more. They're just not willing to tell me. So normally, PEMDAS tells us to work from left to right. Well, would everybody agree? It's not hard, but you'd have to put a little thought into, okay, 25 and 48 is what? So let's take a shortcut. Commutative property says we can rearrange it and maybe go quicker. What would it be better to add together first? 25 and 75, because that will give you... 100, and then when you add the 48, you get 148. Okay, so this is your example for commutative, and you can pick your, pen, pick your pencils back up if you want. Commutative of addition. Okay, does everybody understand the shortcut? You don't always, how many will admit most of the time you just like see a problem and you start working PEMDAS and you go left or right and you don't matter how it is, you follow PEMDAS. And that works. That's, does it still get you to the same answer? It does, but I encourage you to start looking for shortcuts, okay? And throughout this class, I always talk about math being easy. What's the easiest way to do this problem? And that's the route that we're going to take, okay? Let's go to example two. Would everybody agree? How many know what 25 times 37 is right off the bat? Not many. We'd have to go off and work it out, right? How many of us will admit, if I gave this to you normally on any normal day, you would start here and work those two first? Most of us would, right? But let's think about it. What's the shortcut? Would it be easier if we rearranged and did 25 times 4 first? What would that give you? That would give you 100, and then 100 times 37 is 3,700, and that was easier. Okay, so I encourage you, you know, we've learned these properties for years. How many will admit? You've learned these properties for years, but you've never put them to use. Put them to use. Start rearranging if you can. Now, can you always take a shortcut? No. Okay, you can only do it when it's all addition or when it's all multiplication. What if I throw addition and multiplication all in the same problem? You can't do it. Then you have to go back to PEMDAS. You with me? So most of the time, we have to do PEMDAS because most of the time there's more than one. Sometimes there's subtraction or division or something like that in the problem. But if it gets down to a step at the very, very end and it's all addition, if it would be easier for you, you know, add it to what makes sense to you. Questions on commutative? All right. Let's go to associative. Who can I pick on today? Good. Now, Colby, just know that I am completely picking on you. Okay, but here we go. Ready? <clears throat> Colby, man, I saw you at lunch yesterday. 
don't really like who you're associating with. Now, I have no clue what lunch you eat or who you associate with, but, so you know I'm kidding. But what did I tell them? That I didn't like what? I didn't like his group of people, right? I didn't like who he was hanging with. Well, in math, that's what I think of when I think associate, associative, is I think your group. In math, how do we group numbers together? How do you hold numbers together? How do you group them together? With parentheses, right. You stick parentheses around them, they're all together. Does that change anything? When you put parentheses around it, what do you have to do? You have to do those first, and then you do what's outside the parentheses. So it does affect your problem, but here's the shortcut. Again, this is of addition for that block, and this is of multiplication, the definitions for that block. But it says this. Here, I would add A and B first. They are sitting at the same table, and they are hanging. You with me? They're grouped together. You would add those first, and then add C. But the shortcut says, if it would make it easier, you could switch your groups. Could Colby switch tables today and change who he's associating with? Could he? He may not want to, but could he? Yeah, he could. So if you want to, the associative property says if you want to, you could add B and C together. You could group those two together and then go back and add A. Either way, you would still have, end up with the same answer. Okay? You could change your groups. Now, I will tell you, in elementary school, you always knew associative because why? You just looked for the one that had parentheses, right? I'm just going to caution you. Yes, you're learning um, the same things you've learned in elementary school, but I'm bumping you up a level. So what I'm going to tell you is, and we probably won't get to it today, but the sample problems we're going to be looking at probably tomorrow first thing, it's not always because it has parentheses that it's associative. Okay. Um, sometimes, for example, if you have... Um, 2 plus 3 plus 4, would this be associative? Who's hanging out here? 3 and 4, right? And you'd add those together and then add the 2. Who's hanging out here? 2 and 3. So have I changed who's hanging? Yeah, I changed my group. So this one would be associative, yes? But you may see one tomorrow that looks like this. 2 plus 3 plus 4, this one is not associative. So a lot of people think, I see parentheses, so it's associative. Well, that's not true always. Who's hanging here? 3 and 4, who's hanging here? 3 and 4, I've not switched groups. What has happened? I just took these two and moved them. And so what property would that be? commutative. Do you see the difference? So it's like, I just want to caution you, don't always think, um, yes, what you learn in elementary school is great, but and it's the same thing, except I'm going to take it in the way I present it, I'm going to present it at a more advanced level. So I'm just bumping you up. When you really get, when you're playing a video game and you get really good at level one and two, what do you do? Go up a level, right? Okay, and that's what we're going to do here. Well, good. I mean, and you did talk associative, but I think the way they gave them to you is the easy, the shortcut around it is in elementary school, the way, you know, normally if it was, it was very basic given to you. If it was commutative, it was just taking things and switching them. And then when you saw parentheses, you're like, oh, parentheses, associative. You know, I just caution you because it's not always parentheses. Okay. All right, so let's put this to some use. Everybody says, I know what associative means, Ms. Corns, but I don't ever really use it. Well, ordinarily, we would do what's in the parentheses first. We'd add 27 and 294 together first, yeah, and then we'd add 6. But my question to you is this, is there, would there be an easier way to do this? I would group the 294 and the 6 together. Why do I group things that end in 4 and 6 together? Because they make zeros at the end. I love like things that end in three and 
Seven. Put those together. Makes ten. I love things that end in four and six. Makes makes a zero. Zeros are easy to work with, right? Tens and things that are even. Okay. Um, I group eights with twos. Does that make sense? That's how I group numbers together. Um, it makes it easy. So if you added those two together first, you would get 300. And then if you added 27, you would get 327. Okay. Would it be the same thing as if you left it alone and did 27 and 294 and then added the 6? Yeah, but everybody agree this is a little easier, right? Quicker, quicker mental math. Okay. If we look at example 4, I know some of you may be thinking, well, Ms. Corn, 6 times 4 is pretty easy, 24. But my question to you is this. How many of us know what 24 times 25 is right off the bat? Okay. I mean, before you switched it around. Like most of us would have to take 24 and 25 off the page and work it, right? So would it be easier to group what? 4 and 25 together because that makes 100 and then 100 times 6 is 600. So it may be easier to switch your groups that way. Okay, any questions on associative and changing the groups? Okay. Let's go to identity. My identity is who I am. And I can get really fat. And I could shave my head. I really wouldn't want to, but I could. Okay, or I could dye my hair black. I could completely, you know, change my dress and, and, you know, I don't know, go whatever you want me to go as, something that's not me now. And I could look completely different. But my question to you is this, can I change my identity? And would I still be the same person? Like, even if you didn't recognize me, if I got, like, super, like, gained a lot of weight and, you know, shaved my head and changed my clothes and you wouldn't recognize me, but I'm still the same person. Do you understand? Yes? Okay, so my key word is stays the same. So tell me, what can you add to a number that stays the same? Zero. What can you multiply by a number? One. Okay, and these are so easy, I didn't even do any examples for those. Okay. I will tell you, and I just want you to, um, and I'll try to remind you when we get to it, but you use these properties all the time because let me just go to a basic equation and you should be able to do this what would you do to solve this equation <laughs> subtract two right every agree or and most of you probably did this minus two minus two here right and then most of you we're gonna get to this one in a minute what are these two they're opposites, but what do they equal? They equal zero. Does that make sense? Yes. And what do you need to know that a plus zero is? It's the same thing, and so you're finished. Now, most of us don't do this whole step right here, right? You don't do the, you just say they cancel, and you bring down the a, and a is six. Yes? But I need you to understand that anything plus zero, you use it all the time when you solve equations and you don't even realize. A lot of these properties you use, you just don't even realize that you are using them. Okay, So just trust me along the way that you will use them as we get into solving equations um, and as we get into slope. There are some things um, that we're doing in my third block. They're looking at something like this right now and they're graphing equations. And I know y'all have done a little bit of graphing, right? Y'all know what this point is? It's the origin, and it has two numbers that go with it. Can somebody tell me what two numbers? Zero, zero, right? Okay. So here's the thing. We learned the other day, and again, don't worry about this if you don't understand this, but my third block class is learning that this number out here, normally it has like a number like 2x plus 5. And so it means something. So what happens when there is no number? What could you add that it would stay 2x? Which one is it? We're going to add. Zero. And so this number tells us where our line starts on the coordinate plane, which means it would start at the origin. 
Okay? Does that make sense? So you're going to use that. You'd have to know that what can I add to a number that won't change it? Well, that's you using your identity property. You knowing that you can add zero to a number and it won't change it. Does that make sense? Same thing like this. If I, you know, normally our variables, x's and y's, we have two y's and three x and five b's. Well, what if I just have an x right here? Is there a number in front of it? Yes, there is. What number could you put in front of it that won't change it? There's one X right there. Okay, and we're going to talk about that a lot coming up sooner than later. Okay, so just trust me along the way. We use this. I know everybody's like, that's so easy. We don't, you know, I whatever. I know that. I know you can add zero to a number or times by one and it won't change it. But you use it more than you think you do. Okay, it's algebra one. Um, but they've been with me. It's uh, the year long. Okay. Inverse. Um, so, if something's inverted, flipped, very good, or rearranged, or opposite. So, that's what I think. Here is of addition. We add opposites. You told me two seconds ago. When you added the 2 and the negative 2, what happened? They canceled, and it gives you 0. Does that make sense? You need to, and that's how you solve. You solve equations by doing the opposite, right? By doing the inverse. Same thing with multiplication. If you don't understand what this says, this says A over 1 times 1 over A. If you multiplied straight across, what would you get? Well, 1 times A is A, and 1 times A is A, and what's A over A? Anything over itself is equal to 1. Does that make sense? So that's what that means right there if you don't understand it. Okay, and again, you use that anytime you solve an equation because you're canceling, okay, and that's what that means. Again, the long way around it is for us to box this in and say, okay, this is all positive and this is a negative. Are they the same or are they different signs? Different, so what will we add or what will we subtract? We would subtract and take the sign of the larger number. Well, that's the long way around it. The best thing to do, the shortcut, those are opposites from each other. Positive 4 and negative 4, what happens? They cancel and give you 0. You need to, that's the shortcut. You need to recognize opposites. Okay, you need to recognize opposites. Same thing here, 4 over 1 times 1 over 4. If I crossed reduced, what would happen to the 4s? This would become a 1, and this would become a 1, and if you multiply it across, everything would just become 1. You need to recognize, when, once we start canceling, that when things cancel, instead of sitting there and having to actually multiply it. You with me? That's the long way around it. Okay, so multiplying reciprocals, adding opposites. That's your inverse property. Any questions? Okay, almost finished. This one's pretty simple. Multiplication property of zero. Somebody tell me about it. When you multiply by zero, you get zero. And that's all it says. A times zero is zero. A times zero is zero. And I didn't do an example for this one either because, again, I feel like you understand it. It's just you need to be able, you don't need to have to sit there and think about it. You just need to be able to be like, oh, that's times zero, zero. The whole thing, zero. Okay. Then we have the multiplication property of negative one. So, anything times negative 1 does what? What's the shortcut? I love that. I heard one that says takes it and makes it positive, and I heard one that says takes it and makes it negative. Agree or disagree? Both. Or both. If it's positive, 5. And I times it by negative 1, what does it do to it? It takes it and makes it negative 5. If it's negative 5 times negative 1, what does it do? It makes it positive. So you're both right. 
okay? It just takes it and flips it to the opposite side. So here's what I'm going to tell you. In a couple months from now, we're going to be looking at equations, and it might say something like this. Well, what we have to have is, and again, if you don't understand this, it's okay, but what I want you to understand is this. We have to have a positive y. So if I want something to switch signs, what do I need to do to it? Take it and times it by negative 1. If I times this by negative 1, what does it do? It becomes a positive. Just switch the signs, and that's the shortcut. If you understand that when you times something by negative 1, anything times 1, it's going to say the same, right? So when you times it by a negative, it just takes it and switches signs. When you times the 2x, then this becomes, this is a positive, so this becomes negative 2x. And then when you times the negative 8, everybody understand that this is a negative 8? Yes? Okay. It would become positive 8. It's going to switch the sign. Does that make sense? And just switches it. So that's what I want you, again, if you don't understand the whole equation, um, we haven't gotten to that. But what I do want you to understand is where you're going to be using it down the road. That was weird. Um, so you are going to be multiplying things by negative 1. And the shortcut is, is you need to know, I mean, you can sit there and you can go, okay, a negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative times a positive is a negative. That's the long way around it. Does that make sense? The shortcut is, just know when you times something by a negative, all the signs just switch. Okay, that's the shortcut. Questions? Did you have a question? Or did I answer it? Did, very good. Which leads us into our next property, okay? Um, and that is our distributive property. Okay, and that's the last one we're going to do for today. Okay, this is the last one we're going to do for today. So distributive property. You've heard time and time again, if the teacher distributes the papers, who does she give one to? I give one to everybody, right? If I'm distributing the quizzes out, I give one to everybody. I count them out here and give one there, and I count them out here and give them there, okay? But I always seem to miss one somewhere along the way, but I'm supposed to give one to everybody, right? So that's what you do when you distribute, okay? So distributed property looks something like this. It's going to have, and you can put this all in the same box if you'd like to, it's going to have a number on the outside of the parentheses, and it's going to be right beside of it. What does it mean when it's right beside of it? Times. It means multiplication. Okay? And then you're going to have a couple of numbers on the inside. A minute ago we had three, right? We had the y and then we had the x term and then we had the number term as well. Okay? So it'll have, it's not just necessarily going to be two numbers. For today it will. Okay? But in a while it's going to have like several sets of terms in there. Okay, you're just, normally we add the B and the C together. And if you can add the whatever's inside, great. But sometimes things don't look alike. And if they don't look alike, we call them like terms, you can't add them. Okay, remember, you know, fractions. You can't add and subtract fractions unless what? They match, right? The denominators match. You know, in order to add and subtract things, things have to match. Okay. Does that make sense? If I had, you know, five um, pencils and six pens and I wanted to put them all together, what would I have? I still have five pencils and six pens. I can't have pencils. Like, you can't add pencils and pens. It doesn't work. Does that make sense? You'd have five pens and, or five pencils and six pens. Okay. But if I had like two pencils and three pencils and put them together, could you add those and have what? Five pencils. I always say apples and bananas. I say you can't have banapples. Okay? If I have five apples and three apples, you can put those together and have eight apples. But if you have five apples and six bananas, if you put them together, do you have... 11 banapples? No, you don't have banapples. Are you with me? You can't add things that don't match. So normally the B and the C won't match. So everybody throws their pencil up and says, Miss Corsi, can't do this. Can't do this. The B and the C don't match. Can't add them. Can't do anything. Well, that's not true. If you can't do a math problem one way, you can 
find another way to do it, right? You gotta, you gotta find a, figure out a different way to do it. So what we do to keep going with our equations or our problems is we distribute. Okay, so we take the a and we times it by the b, and a times b would be a b. And then I agree with Lindsay, you gotta do it by everything, right? So you do a times the c and get a c. Okay, and all you're doing is getting rid of the parentheses. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. These will be our last ones for today. Normally, your examples probably look like example 7. People seen, y'all seen things that look like example 7? Yes. But again, you've learned distributive property. I know you have. But probably, I'm going to take it up a level because, for example, on example nine, what's different about it that you probably haven't seen? It's um, it's just reversed, okay? Um, what about example ten? Right, there's some negatives thrown in there, right? So I'm just going to take it and bump it up just a little bit of a level, okay? So again, normally PEMDAS, we do the inside. Can I add x and two? No, right? Can't have an apples. Okay? You can't add x and 2. One's a variable, one's a number. You can't add them. Okay? I know y'all think I'm silly when I say banapples, but, you know, when I look at you from now on, you know, someone's going to look at me and say, Ms. Corrin, you can't add banapples. It'll help you remember. So my crazy analogies and my crazy stories will help you remember. I promise. Okay? You just have to let it be. Okay? So normally you would add x and 2, but we can't. So... You got to keep going with the problem somehow. You can distribute. So we're going to take the number on the outside. 5 times x is 5x. And again, do you ever say x5? No. You always properly put the number in front. 5x. Okay. And then, I agree with Lindsay, you got to do it times everything. 5 times positive 2 is 10. Now the question is, do I just put 10? Because it's positive 10, you're going to put plus 10. If it's positive, you put plus 10. If it's negative, you put minus 10. Do you understand that? Okay, can I add, can I keep rolling and add these two and get 15x? That's what a lot of people like to do. Yes or no? Do they match? No. These x, I use xylophone. For x, because a xylophone starts with x. You with me? The little bell things in the band. Okay. So I have five. Miss Stover downstairs has five xylophones. You with me? She's got five of them. Can I add that just with 10, 10, 10 something? No. You can't add them. Now, what if it were a 10x? Could you add five xylophones and 10 xylophones, and all together you would have 15 xylophones, 15x's? Okay. But you can't add things that don't match. So here's what I'm going to tell you. It's going to feel weird to you because we like our numbers to be like, our answers to be like two, three, negative five. We like our answers to be like one little number, right? So for today, your answers are going to look something like this. Okay, and tomorrow. We're not solving anything. Why are we not solving anything? There's no equals. This is not an equation. All we're doing is getting rid of the parentheses. So here's your goal for today, okay? To get rid of the parentheses is my goal, okay? So repeat after me. The goal is to get rid of the parentheses. Oh, you aren't fun. Come on. The goal is to get rid of the parentheses. The goal is to get rid of the parentheses. I know y'all think I'm retarded. Come on. The goal is to get rid of the parentheses. Research proves that if you tell yourself something seven times, You'll remember it, okay? So you'll get used to it. We're going to repeat a lot of things in here. If you don't tell yourself seven times, then you, it, you don't retain it. So here we go. A couple more times. The goal is to get rid of the parentheses. The goal is to get rid of the parentheses. The goal is to get rid of the parentheses. All right. Y'all got to get a lot more fun than that. Like when I tell my third block because they've been with me all year, I'll be like, the goal is get rid of the parentheses. And they'll go, the goal is get rid of the parentheses. 
and they'll say, the goal is to get rid of the pins, and they'll go, the goal is to get rid of the pins, and so, I don't know, it just messes up. Okay, I'm going to stop there for today. We're going to pick up here tomorrow. No homework for today.